Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome, uh, guys, to another How I've Learned Arabic or How I Learned Arabic uh, series. It's been a long time, so I, I, I can't remember what was the, you know, the, the salutation of it. But uh, inshallah, you guys already know how this works. I bring you guys, brothers and, and, and sisters, perhaps, uh, that they have learned Arabic. And I ask them how they did it, basically. So, uh, so what I would like right now from you, Akhi Arshad, is to introduce yourself a little bit and give us a little bit of, uh, of context on how you've learned Arabic. Uh, so just a little bit about me also. So my name is Arshad, mm -hmm. as you just introduced me. So I have an Indian background, uh, but I grew up in different countries. I grew, I lived in Kuwait for a small amount of time. When I say small, I lived there for 10 years, Masha. went to a secular school. I, did, <laughs> I took very little Arabic. Masha. And then from there, I moved to the United Arab Emirates for another 10 years. And then from there, I moved to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, but I have an Indian background, so okay. that's like a little start. Uh, my first exposure to any sort of Arabic was obviously in Kuwait. But mm -hmm. since I went to a secular school, there's very little or almost no deen mm -hmm. in in my life. I mean, and then you have the government forces you to take some religion because by law, the, even if you're a pure secular school, you take some religion and you take some Arabic. It's right. by law mm -hmm. in Kuwait. So there are more, a lot of foreigners, even Muslims, they have some idea of the Arabic language. Like they were able to read with the tashkil, like the the, the harakat. Mm -hmm. If you tell them how the baytun, so they, they they know the bare basic, even the non-Muslims. No. But to the next level, because uh, in countries like Kuwait or even in the Emirates, your your interaction with the Arabs mm -hmm. is is very limited, except at work. Mashallah. Subhanallah, it's a very uh, strange thing. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if people know about this. Mm. You, you stay in your own bubble. Like if you're yeah. someone from an Indo-Pakistani background, you go to your own schools. Mm -hmm. And if your schools are secular, you get a secular education. You'll find a lot of people fluent in the English language, mm -hmm. but they don't know or they barely know any Arabic. Subhanallah. <laughs> and they, they've lived there all their lives. Uh, so when I moved to the Emirates, I did my engineering there. And then after I did my engineering, uh, my third year or fourth year of uh, when I was in uh, engineering, one of my old friends, uh, he, he started growing out a beard all of a sudden. And then <laughs> I didn't see him for a long time. And then I saw him and I, I was like, hey, what happened to you? You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, the Muslims in the Muslim countries, everybody thinks, you know, there are no banks, there are no this, you know, yeah. they're like the Sahaba. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> but... Um, you know, a lot of us were not even practicing. We, you know, we we listened to hip hop, and that was the culture mm -hmm. even among the Muslims. So, uh, and I saw him. I was like, you know, what happened to you? You know, why are you doing this to yourself? You no. know, <laughs> we'd be in prison <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me, no, no, you know, you know, we need to become better. And then after that, you know, I forgot about him. You know, I, mm -hmm. I knew that this friend of mine changed. Then I heard other people like randomly, oh, this guy, he started growing a beard. Mm -hmm. He was just, I didn't get it. And then I went to this uh, gym. Mm -hmm. I used to love martial arts. I mean, I until last year, I, I did it for almost 12, 13 years. I met this American brother. Mm -hmm. He was he was in the military, subhanAllah. And then he became Muslim. And, and then that was the first time I really, really came across or dealt with people like uh, practicing Muslims on a day-to-day -day basis. And then I noticed, you know, he was always on time. He took his classes very seriously, which is very unusual. <laughs> like the Muslims are always oh, late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is this, uh, sad truth. <laughs> so I, I, he was he was a very nice brother, and mm -hmm. he like when it, what was shocking was it was uh, we were doing we were in class. It was Salat al Maghrib, right? No. And he's like, let's all stop because all the martial arts classes that I went to before, they would just keep training, and he's like. Let's stop for prayer. And I was like, what? Yeah. What's he doing? <laughs> yeah. And then he took us to the musallah that was downstairs. This is a ni'mah of living in the Muslim countries because mm -hmm. you have musallahs everywhere. Yeah. And we prayed. And I'm like, this is strange. What is this? <laughs> I was just like, what's yeah. going on here? So, so that was like my first exposure to like really practicing Muslims. And mm -hmm. then um, after I graduated, I got a lot more serious with life in general and then uh, I watched this one video uh, that I came across and it was just, that was just the start 
of my chains and i told myself that was when i was around 22 23 i just started working in dubai i was like you know what i'm going to learn this language the biggest problem i had was uh, most of the these arabic classes that they have in the islamic centers mm -hmm. because if you go to these secular institutes it's all mixed and you're just like so i didn't want to go there i went to all the islamic centers the biggest problem is that uh, so there are two things Either they start the class and after like two, three months, they would shut the program because people stop coming or if the sheikh is really busy, mm -hmm. he just stops coming. And the other issue, which I think you spoke about in your podcast also, was they teach you only grammar rules. Yeah. And for somebody like me who, you know, who learned English growing up, who learned uh, like Urdu is one of the la other languages that I just learned just dealing with people I, I just picked up the language mm -hmm. and I told myself there's no ways that Arabic is this difficult that all you do they started teaching me I was on a soft I mean today I'm thinking of it I was like why are they doing this to me yeah I mean it was like okay there's something wrong then I went to uh, some of my friends I was like you know th this isn't right man I mean there's something weird all I'm doing is learning grammar there's no vocabulary there's no <laughs> and then I actually went to the teacher Mm -hmm. uh, I said, you know, this this method doesn't make any sense to me because for somebody who's learned different languages, is you, you I never learned even. So I told them I was like, I don't understand why we're only lo uh, learning just grammar. I don't, you, there's no vocabulary to it, and uh, I, I don't think so. He was too happy with whatever I said, mm -hmm. but uh, he said this is the right manhaj, even though it's not a aqidah issue, but. No. He said, this is the right way to do it. And uh, subhanAllah, then I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop these classes. I'm going to study. I just Googled. All I did mm -hmm. is I was like, who's teaching Arabic classes and stuff? Then I came across this uh, website. It was called Huda Online Courses, something along. Mm -hmm. So there, there was an online one-on-one uh, -on -one Arabic teacher that I found on Skype. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, this teacher said, he's going to teach al arabiya to Bain mm -hmm. This was my first any sort of exposure to real Arabic, I mean, uh, subhanAllah, I mean, I knew a lot of the vocabulary, like the basic stuff, mm -hmm. but for the first 200 pages, we rushed through really quick because I was like, oh, this is easy. Had that bit, you know, assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum, yeah. ma, ma, ma took. this is all pretty yeah. easy. So then after 200 pages, he started taking slow. It was a lot of memorization, vocabulary, and, and he spoke to me only in Arabic from day one. My instructor, like all, either he barely spoke any English or he didn't want to speak in English with me. Yeah. So he only spoke to me in Arabic. And then uh, I finished the first book. I finished the second book. And that's when I had to leave UAE. SubhanAllah, mm -hmm. after spending 20 years, it was very saddening for me. But Sorry, Akhi, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm just going to write down because there's things that you mentioned in that I want to come back to it. So I don't want to forget. So if you see me writing, it's not that I'm ignoring you. I'm actually writing down what you're saying. Yeah, All right, go, go ahead. On. So once I feel, I think I was almost done with the second book or I was pretty close. And then I had to leave the UAE. Uh, I went to the U.S. My wife is uh, an Egyptian American. That's just another story altogether. I specifically wanted to get married to an Arab for a few reasons. Inshallah. But... Uh, I, I moved to the U.S. Um, and then I continued studying Arabic on Skype. I finished uh, the third book also. Mm -hmm. While I was doing the third book, I wanted to continue my Islamic studies in Arabic. So I told myself the only way I keep constantly improving, if I started moving all my studies to Arabic and not English anymore. Mm -hmm. So I took the exam. I'm, I'm doing. I'm still doing the degree. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of Al uh, uh, Madina International. Al Madina uh, International. I've probably heard about it. Yeah, but uh, so yeah. I took the exam because if you're, if you're a non-Arab, if you don't have a diploma or if you don't have one of these things, you got to take an Arabic exam. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, the exam, I was only doing the third book of Al-Arabiya to Bayna Yadik and I thought it was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I took the exam, uh, I, I, I passed through it. The first semester, I have to admit, it was I found it very difficult. I was like, I was even asking myself, why am I doing this to myself? I can just chill and... Alhamdulillah, after the first semester, my, my, my grades weren't too good the first semester. And the second semester, it was, uh, Alhamdulillah, it got much, much better. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, I noticed my grades started going up. But what I noticed was my motivation was going down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got better at the language, but yeah. after a point, I felt like I'm just studying for, oh, I got an exam, all right, 200 pages in two yeah. days. Subhanallah. So, <laughs> So that, that's one of the issues about uh, the university curriculum is that they give you 600 pages of fiqh and they want you to finish the book by yourself. You read through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
people benefit from it. I definitely benefited from Ulum al Quran and subjects of Mustarah al Hadith. There's no doubt. But I feel like 600 pages, 500 pages of PDF. You have to go through, listen to lectures, and you have to do your own research for all the assignments. It was very like, I, I, I don't know. I, even now I'm like, is this good or bad? It, it's good. You're gaining knowledge, but you rush through a lot of the stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't know where to uh, stop the... But alhamdulillah, this is where I am right now. I started giving khutbahs because I feel like I can translate a lot of the materials of the scholars. No. Rather than... It, a, lot, a lot of the khatibs today, what I noticed was there, there aren't a lot of storytelling. Yeah. For some reason, they, they, I mean, I'm not against them story, but if that's the only thing, there's no ayat of the Quran, there's no hadith that should... Yeah, there I, is something about like, that as well. I remember in London, they, they asked me to, um, to do a khutbah in, in two-team Broadway masjid. And he told me, make, make sure you, you do storytelling. <laughs> I'm like, okay. It's true that storytelling, even from a business perspective, it does. They sell, they sell words tell and stories sell. So like, you know, it makes the person emotionally or it stimulates the, the emotions of the, of the person basically. So maybe that's, that's the reason. Hmm. Okay, I mean, I, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not against people, but the problem is if that's the only thing that, and if you check the story that they're telling, mm -hmm. let's say the, the the story between Imam Ahmed and the baker, right? Mm -hmm. Once I went back to the, the the references, a lot of the references, there is no, there's no, <laughs> there's just, no, there's no foundation on the story. They're like, no. this is mashhur, but if you go back, there's nothing found. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are just using this. This story, which is as well an issue as well, uh, you know, a subject remind or using uh, uh, words, I mean, uh, stories that don't have no, or you don't have no dalil or no substance that it is a hadith, sahih or athar. You know, there's a sub, it's a, it's a subject, it's a mas'ala in, in, in itself, if you can actually, you know, use it to, to uh, perhaps preach or pick out points of, of those mm -hmm. things. But uh, but yeah, Barakallah for uh, for the introduction. I read a few things because I didn't want to to forget, uh, and I wanted to go back to it, which is uh, when you was mentioning you, you know the teacher in uh, yeah. you said he was Kuwait or Emirates. I think it was Emirates. Emirates, right? yeah, yes, yeah. Emirates. So he was pretty much teaching all all grammar and whatnot. And so it's, it's, it's interesting that you said that because you see me uh, in in Andrews Institute that come we have a. You know, I have a team behind me. If I was by myself, I would definitely not be able to, to take care of over 150 students and, and you know, provide the same result to everyone. So, um, so uh, one of our team members is uh, Ustaz Ab, or Sheikh Abdel Tawab, which is, uh, was my, my teacher in Egypt, basically. So okay. all my Arabic I know is, is through, is, you know, from Allah and then from, you know, from all his teachings. And, uh, and all up until today, I need to tell him what, what I want from him to, you know, prepare for me or, or get me ready or, or things like that. Because it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah, Sheikh, you know, you forgot words. Why are you not writing down these words? And he's like, yeah, but these words are known. He's like, yeah, but we, we know, we are, we gone from zero. We don't have no Arabic. So it's not, it's not known to us. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, mm -hmm. for example, he wouldn't write, I don't know, you know, Dahaba or Beitun or... He's like, no, Sheikh, we need them because we don't know it. It's not known to us. He's like, oh, okay, tayyip, tayyip, inshallah. And there is things like for them is... is and I remember even when I was in, in Egypt, um, in the, the, the school I was studying Arabic the first year, the, um, the person who used to, to train, not... You know, it doesn't mean that, that because he's trained them has more knowledge in the Arabic language than them. But training them on the on the manhaj, as you said, the, the the methodology of teaching, he was French. He was the director of the of the school, and he was French. And basically, mentoring them, telling them what us as you know uh, non-Arabic speakers we need to go through in order for us to attain the the known. Yeah, no, this is known for us level basically. And uh, yeah, it's just interesting because it's not everyone. And a lot of people have, you know, made this mistake that, oh, no, I'd rather study with this Arab person because he, he's Arab. He's going to teach me better. Yeah. But that's not the case in most of the times. Actually, someone who, who is not Arab 
and been through the process of not knowing the Arabic language and learning the Arabic language, then is most of the times more qualified to, to teach you the Arabic language if you have kind of like same backgrounds as non-Arabic speaker. So yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting that you said that because, because that's, you know, most of, even after 12, my, my sheikh, he would say, I would tell him, yeah, can you, can you benefit my students? And this? he's like, no, that's too, the level is too hafid uh, for me. It's not, you know, it's not, I can't, I don't know how to teach to beginners, basically. He mm, tells me yeah. that. And I'm telling you, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, he's like, I remember when we were in class, he would be memorizing Ash'ar, like he would be memorizing <laughs> Arabic poetry as I'm writing down in the, as, you know, he writes down on the back, on the, bla on the whiteboard, and then I have to write down in the, in the daftar. He would take those two, three minutes just to keep memorizing things like that. So he's a beast in, in Arabic, but it's just, he just doesn't, you know, being a beast doesn't mean that you know how to, how to teach, teach it to, off, to yeah. everyone, yeah. So, uh, so, so it was, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a funny point that you mentioned. So, why do you think that, you know, after going from this method, then, uh, you know, and you feeling after a while that you're not gaining much and you're not feeling, you know, fulfilled in terms of what you learned from Arabic language, and then you found Arabic and Arabic. Why do you say this was kind of like the first? you know, real book or, you know, the first approach that I had to, to have. Yeah. Coach. So uh, when I was learning, right, so what I did was I kept my Arabic classes that the, with the Ustad that, that was in MB Emirates. Mm -hmm. And I started doing al Arabic to Baini Arabic. What I noticed was I, I, in three months, I was speaking Arabic, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, you could sit with the other Ustad for two years. <laughs> If you, I'm telling you, if you could say to al bait, I would have been surprised because, <laughs> because uh, you're doing a lot of grammar, but you don't know how to put a sen sentence together. So what, yeah. what was the benefit? Because I told him and I spoke to him in Arabic at this point. I was in his car and I was like, and I spoke to him in Arabic. I saw his face change because he was just surprised that I was. Yeah. And then the only thing I told him, listen, I don't understand that how you could. You know, he told me that I've, I know a lot of Arabs when they become religious, they go study Nahu and Sarf. But mm -hmm. for you, it's great because you already have the vocabulary. But for somebody who's trying to learn the, uh, the language, if you don't have the vocabulary, yeah. it's almost depressing because you can't even express yourself with the very basic. Of course, yeah. <laughs> this is why so, Arab I think is always my, I mean, this is what we, what we study in, in, okay. in another institution. He's always my... Even when people ask me, what, do, what markaz do you think I should go to, to Egypt? There's all these marakas, they came up with their own books and it's full of grammar mm -hmm. and things like that. Just go to the, you know, whatever have worked, don't try and reinvent, the, reinvent yeah. the wheel. How many people did become fluent in Arabic through al Arabi bin Aydik? It's just yeah. incredible. SubhanAllah. I mean, I, I tried the al Arabi to bin Aydik with a bunch of kids in, uh, in, the, in an after school program. I noticed a lot of the kids, they really liked al Arabi to Baini Yadik. They had another curriculum also, which is like more grammar based. And mm -hmm. I noticed the kids don't really enjoy it. This is also a difference. Like when it's more spoken, I noticed the kids were more interactive. They, yeah. they enjoyed the language. But mm -hmm. when you teach grammar, I feel like everybody's like, they're like, oh, I, I don't want to. They yeah. don't enjoy it anymore. So they, they don't know how to use this practically. And you got to feel the language. If you don't feel the language, yeah. all you're doing is grammar. Plus, I think it's as well. It's just the, like, many times when you, when when people ask me on how to learn Arabic, I, I bring them back to when you was a kid. How did you learn? A, you know, I just think that's the natural way. This is how they like, why they like it more because kids they have fitra in all types of in all aspects. So learning like language, I mean, I've learned five languages myself, and it's it's the same exact method. Then then. Uh, like one language if you learn one language if we speak in english right now if there's anyone out there listening right now and and um and they thinking or they speak english already or if they listen in understanding if you have learned one language you can learn arabic it's it's not big deal it's the same exact process just keep building your vocabulary keep building your vocabulary yeah. until 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 you you know you just have so much vocabulary that you that you speak in the language pretty much so um so yeah i just think it's the it's the natural way i wouldn't go to it any other way i think like people who just come up with new methods and they're just trying to reinvent reinvent and like be different but it's not all the time it's always it's not always good to be different and 
you know, come up with new stuff. Like, be the eye in general is not good, man. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? So, so yeah, what I wanted to ask you about is um, once you said, because this is something um, I always tell my students, and we actually, when, when a student joins the our our program on Wednesdays, I, I have uh, an onboarding call with, with new students. And one of the main things that I want them to, to keep in mind and what I want them what I want to emphasize on is for them to go over the introduction module so we have four modules and the first one is the introduction which is what I call brain hacking and so and so one of the you know the main things that we focus on this four hour introduction training is to get rid of motivation and welcome discipline because if you rely on mm. motivation after one, yeah. two, three months, is done. And something really interesting is that every time, either when I see that a student, for example, might say, "Yeah, I need to leave the program," or uh, "Yeah, it's not working for me," or or mm -hmm. just disappear, literally stop, you know, completing assessments or anything like that. I check on their pro pro uh, progress. Some of them they don't know I can do that, but I check their progress and I see if they have watched and went over the introduction. Oops. I just lost you. Oh. Wait one second, my my screen went black. Yeah, that there you go. So I, I check um, I check their progress and if they went over the introduction, and most of those who left or stopped or whatever, they haven't gone through over the introduction. And I always tell them it's the hardest thing, the hardest thing to watch and to go over into and to, to kind of like put in practice. But it's the thing that will, is your foundation of, of reaching the goal, basically. You see what I'm trying to say? It's like, yeah. you go, you're trying to do a six month desert marathon walking or whatever it is, and, and you just go with a pair of shoes and, and some pants. Like, you don't even prepare for it. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm. you yeah. see the journey already, what, how it's going to be, but you don't get the necessary tools that is going to allow you to to be able to achieve that goal, which is water, you know, whatever, vitamins or whatever you need to stay in the middle of the desert for, for six months. So, um, so yeah, what do you think you, how did you kind of like change or fix that problem when you said that your motivation was going down? No, so Alhamdulillah, you know, like, uh, I mean, you, I, I, Alhamdulillah, this, especially this last semester, I've gotten a lot more serious. Uh, and even even uh, my Arabic teacher, like I still study other focusing more on poetry and badaba, because um, that's like I feel like the next step just helps me with my university. So I remember I was like getting a little, I was slacking. No. <laughs> my Arabic teacher was like, "Listen, if you're going to study with me, you have to be serious. You no, know, like no. you can't just come attend class and just chill." And he's like, "No, if you're going to take this seriously, you got to put in the time. You have to put in the hours." <laughs> You got to revise. You just can't come into class mm -hmm. and then expect to like benefit. And re you got to put in the time. I mean, any, if anything that I've learned, even from martial arts, mm -hmm. if you don't really have that dedication mm -hmm. or really if you don't really want it, you're not going to see results. Because no. I've noticed the first day in the gym or even when they're learning Arabic, everyone's like, how long is it going to take me? A two months, three months? Yeah. And it's, it it's, it's before I forget, it's so crazy that you say this because I always tell my students if you are not obsessed about becoming fluent in Arabic you're not gonna achieve you're not yeah. gonna complete the program if you're not obsessed about it to the point where and and it's funny as well that you said that I ask you how do you fix that and you tell me what well, my teacher told me and basically put pressure on me so like it's always it's little you know systems like this that I think helps with uh with getting back that that discipline but yeah go on yeah, I mean, it's just so So recently, there's this brother who lives uh, right close to my house. Mm -hmm. And uh, he told me that he was studying Arabic online for about a year. And then he was just like, he's like, I was learning, but I just felt like, uh, you know, I was barely, I mean, he's, he said his progress was slow. He was learning al mm -hmm. I told him, listen, have this attitude. When you're going, he, he said he did pharmacy. I told him, when you go into, you know, college of pharmacy or something, you know, you got a four years path, right? Mm -hmm. Just tell yourself. Finish the whole curriculum. Be disciplined in that time. Make sure you study. Put in the time. Don't ask yourself every month. Because no. if you keep, if you got to just tell you, you need to have a mindset that, all right, let me study, 
go through the whole program and mm-hmm. be disciplined throughout the whole thing. And then, all right, ask us if you see no progress at all, then maybe there's an issue with the instructor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, people are not patient. So that's when you got to be like really, really mm-hmm. forced. And I say for yourself, you, you need to have that passion. I've, mm-hmm. I've noticed a lot of people, they want to learn Arabic. But if you're if you don't have that passion inside of you, you you're not gonna yeah, get across. It's hard. It's hard. This is why sometimes I, I don't know what to what to advise to some of my students. On Sundays we do we have what we call performance tracking calls, which is basically where we talk and I assess them on a on a more personal, individual level. And sometimes it's just like. You know, every every Sunday we set objective for the next week. Some of the students they don't they don't achieve those objective for like week after week after week, and and I keep making the objectives smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's like, like what is the reason? I always ask five times why why do you why 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 do you, why did why you think you didn't complete the assessment, and and sometimes it's just like yeah I don't know I just have a I'm trying to do this other thing and I'm trying to become. Th- and it's like, but then how do you expect to learn Arabic, you know? Like, you need to focus. I always tell them, just focus on Arabic. Stop doing five mm-hmm. different things. Otherwise, your energy is just spread out Waste, in five different yeah. things. And either you're not going to, you will, you will never achieve it or, or you will achieve it in, in 20 years when it usually would take you just two years. Just pause the rest and focus on right now on Arabic. Get it? Stag it up, you know, lock it down, and then go to the go to the next thing. Subhanallah. I mean, this is for me also because <laughs> this advice is, alhamdulillah. You know, I told myself after a couple of months, I'm cutting off the stuff that I don't want to do. Is I'm just going to mm-hmm. focus on few things and just work work on those, because in because sometimes when you're motivated, you end up like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I yeah, want to do this, and yeah. then you're like, uh oh. Yeah, this is the problem. This is why. You know, a lot of people it just pop up on my mind. A lot of a lot of people they say, you know, going to another country, whether it's Kuwait, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Yemen, Saudi, or whatever, they think it will make it will make it easier to. They think it will learn Arabic easier because the fact that they are in a in a Muslim, in a Muslim country or in an okay. Arab country. But the point is that it's not because of that. The only thing it becomes easier is because you left everything behind. Yes. And you travel to another place just for that particular purpose, for the niyyah of becoming, uh, you know, fluent in Arabic or whatever. But uh, because it's like, it's like you said, and, and this is something I didn't write down. It's just popped up on my mind as well. When you're in an Arab country, like me here in Mauritania, I don't speak Arabic. I just speak Arabic to my students, to be honest. <laughs> Outside is... Amiya, yeah, it's either Amiya, it's either French, or it's either you just don't talk to people like that. Like you just, yeah. everyone is, you know, like to them. Yeah, minding their business basically. So, uh, so yeah, Subhanallah. In terms of um, of uh, and this is something I wrote down as well. You know, universities giving you different subjects. What do you think is because you was mentioning it's, it's like too much, right? They give you like 600 pages. Yeah. Of mm-hmm. I, I'm starting to question. Like I said, I definitely, definitely benefited. But the question is like, you know, my first semester, I remember Ulum al-Quran was one of my subjects. Okay. Mm-hmm. And somebody who just finished something, something like Al-Arabiya Tibayna Yadaik, who's just, who can pass through the exam, who can mm-hmm. pass through the bare minimum. And then when I took that book, I was like, Oh my God! Do I have to do this myself? No, so it's oh, it's a little too much for somebody. Even if I was full time, I just felt like how much the by end of the day, how much am I going to retake? Because I have to revise. Because mm-hmm. every year you're moving forward. At the same time, you got to revise. So, no. how much can I revise? <laughs> like yeah. six hundred pages. It's, it's not problem. easy. It's 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 so it's crazy because I you know I just got accepted. Uh, I just recently was on a podcast and. Uh, and I mentioned that uh, I got accepted in, in, in Qasim University in Saudi. And before it was always my, you know, my my goal, my dream to go to university in uh, in Saudi and get a degree. And but then thinking about it, when I got once I got accepted, I was super happy. But then I was like, Do I really want to go, man? Because I have the experience already of being in, in Al Azhar. I did three years of, of faculty okay. in Sharia. 
And okay. this is something I was talking about with uh, with a brother who's here as well studying. He's in the desert. I'm in the city. He's studying um, as well here. He has a degree as well from uh, from a Jamia or a Sharia degree from a Jamia in, in Sudan. But um, but the point I was trying to get to is that the way how me <clears throat> being an entrepreneur and a Muslim at the same time, I just don't believe in the educational system in general. And and one of the main factors is because they focus. I'm big on just focusing on one thing. If you want to be good at one thing, just focus on one thing. And the way how it was in in in, in Egypt as well in Al Azhar, it was like this. Subhanallah. Like I will find myself. Like you have, I think it was in Ma'ad al Bu'uth. I think it was 18 subjects in between oh. history, math in Arabic, math in Arabic. That was the biggest challenge I ever did. <laughs> Arud, <laughs> Arabic, Sarf, Fiqh, Shafi, Fiqh, Muqar. It was, it was just crazy. Yeah, like yeah. right now, you ask me anything, I, I can't remember because yeah, it that's... was, it was just too much for you to master one thing. Is you was just studying for the exam basically. So, yeah. uh, so this is why I'm thinking of not going. A lot of people have been asking. Also, oh, you, Mashallah, you going to Qasim University, and it's not always the best. You know, the best option, I would say. I was talking to this brother, like I tell you, uh, Abdul Haq, and, uh, and we kind of like on the same page in terms of, uh, of, of, uh, of studying, mainly ilm, when it comes to fiqh okay. and, uh, and uh, different ulum, funun, uh, you know, of, uh, of the deen. And, uh, and I, the way I see, the way how I vision my, my future in terms of my, you know, increasing my knowledge in deen, I just want to focus every year on one subject. Like, let's say, for yeah. example, this year, just fiqh, you know, memorizing metan, go over it, master it, get it locked, then jump into ulum tafsir, for example. And then, yeah. because otherwise it's just, don't you feel like, I mean, you were saying it, but how can you go over 600 pages? Like, what do you remember right now from it? That's what I want to tell you. What benefit can you give us from it? You know, it's funny. I did a small book, you know, subhanAllah, the, the teacher is very simple. Mm -hmm. I remember those hadith till day, Miftahu Salatahu. Like, even though, but the other hadith that I took in the jamia, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I remembered it for the exam. Mm -hmm. And after the exam, I'm like, okay, what, what did I yeah, study? <laughs> that's it, subhanAllah. It was the same for me. I remember I was uh, brothers with uh, with Yusuf Price, mashallah, may Allah bless him. I don't think he's going to hear this, but... He was a, a OG brother from uh, from New York, and we used to go to the exams together. And it's just like, it's just like we would like literally like you. So you know, you see, if you're ready for an exam, it, it, is, it looks like you can talk to other brothers before the yeah. exam, whatever. Like you're ready, it's in your mind. But when you know you're not ready, and you know you just study for the exam when you like, and I can talk after the exam, inshallah. You know, you're just trying <laughs> to get, just trying, you're just sitting down and. And waiting for the paper to come to like spit what is in your mind because it's short term memory. Yeah, it's short term. Subhanallah. Like even when I give the exam, honestly, if you truly, truly ask me how much have I have I learned? Yes, I've learned. There's no doubt. But if you tell me in the 600 pages, even if I got you know A, mm -hmm. I'm not happy because truly deep down, yeah. I know I haven't truly benefited like I could have benefited if I if I just taken something really small. <laughs> no, Subhanallah. And as well, you see in Lazar in uh, in Al Mahad, uh, I mean in Thanawiya, we studied we studied Al Fiyah ibn Malik. But when I say like this, yeah, we studied Al Fiyah ibn Malik. It sounds like Mashallah, you studied Al Fiyah ibn Malik. But it's like it's not like that because they tell you, okay, this is the whole matan. And the muqarrar is from page random, like mm. five, whatever, 223 to 283. And it's like, you can't even say you studied the book because you just study a few abwab from it or a few chapters <laughs> of it. And it's just like, I, I just don't see, you see, I can't remember who was it. I think it was uh, one of my students. I know it was a sister. I can't remember who was it. She told me I don't want to have um, holes in my knowledge. And, uh, and it, yeah. you know, it's still, it stuck to my mind because it's, tr it's true. Like, you don't want to. And the way how I define it is like information and knowledge. Is either you have information like, yeah, I know something about wudu. I know something about, you know, uh, whatever fiqh issue. 
But it's not like you can sit down and, you know, alhamdulillah, and ahmadu wa and, you know, read the matin from your head and teach it and yeah. explain everything. And it's just a different, and this is why I'm thinking right now of, of not going to university when, when talking about this. But, uh, but anyways, let's talk about, um, let's talk about, you know, the method, because the Arabic Benedict always been, well, it's been actually the, the only book that I, that I, that I studied, that I studied in Arabic in vocabulary before I got the, the tools to actually, you know, keep, keep searching vocabulary on my own. And, uh, and like I was saying, I think it's really special, man, because everyone I've seen taking Al Arabiya Benedict, which is the book that we, that we go over in And- Andalus Institute, everyone I've seen someone take it seriously. As you said, three months, four months is where you start, you know, Salaam Alaikum, Nam, Al Ana Ta'alam, Loga, Wa, Wa, you know, you are able to, mm. to talk, like, and you see the real, the real benefit of it. But, when I was in Egypt, for example, I used to see brothers go for like two years on in a Merkaz where they have their own curriculum and whatnot. Yeah. At the end of the year, it's like, Naam, wal jumla hadihi fi mahalli, wal i'rab fi mahalli. And you ask, what is fi mahalli, wa taqdiran, and this mean? And it's like, no, I don't know. It's just, you know, that's the i'rab, that's nahu. And it's like, yeah, but, okay, book, you know, Call the taxi for me and tell him where we at and tell him to come pick us up. He says, nah, okay, you, you better in speaking. He says, but okay, you look good at Nahu, why can't you? You see, so I think it's a lot of being a dick is, is really good because of, uh, because it's, it's just building your vocabulary. So, so explain to us how do you, how did a, a class look like and how did your teacher like break it, break it down and what was your goal after, and how did it look like after the, the lesson as well? What was you doing after the lesson? Uh, so the beginning, so let's say, I'll give you a, a general description of how generally it starts. So mm-hmm. let's say you, you read the lesson. Usually they have a lot of dialogues. You read the lesson. Then you, the, my teacher would make me write all the afail that I took in the lesson. Mm-hmm. So let's say, then I, he will give me all the tasrifat. They'll say, mm-hmm. he'll make me write all the tasrifat. And so, you know, they would be like, okay, give mm-hmm. me a sentence because okay you know this you know this uh, verb yeah. do you know how to use it you know so what's the point of you just memorizing yeah he's like and then uh, i i know i don't know i'm not sure if i want to implement this in my teaching he would make me write the entire lesson like two to three times <laughs> it's eyes to find pain <laughs> yeah, but me. you know alhamdulillah it improved my writing and those words stuck in my brain because mm-hmm. i used to keep writing them and the, because the goal is what you know all these verbs great but can you form a sentence with these verbs mm-hmm. and you know sometimes you understand the meaning but you need to know how it's used in a sentence yeah. and alhamdulillah those things benefited me so much because words like daraba can be used in so many forms like yeah. unless you know how to put it in a sentence yeah, you yeah, can't. Yeah, subhanallah. this is why so this I, is, I always tell my students the the three things in the beginning of the program i tell them the three things we want to focus on for the next 15 months is just three simple things. Forget about grammar. Forget about anyone else's methodology. Just memorize vocabulary. Hear it being used. So you know how it's being used. And use it yourself then. And just keep doing this over and over and over. And it's, it's just exactly as you said. Like, you know, it's like, أضرب, Okay, darab means to beat. Okay, so if I say, well, أضرب لك مثالا. It's like, well, I beat, yeah, exactly. I beat you. What? I beat you an example? What? So it's like, you need to hear it being used. In, yeah. order, in order for you to to know how to put it in context, subhanAllah. So, uh, so after the, um, like, you know, many of, of my students, they have the, because I know everyone, you know, learns different. I tell them what was my way. My way was just, I was just treated as if, as if it was Quran. So, as you said, mm-hmm. we, we would go over, we would do it exactly as you said. Uh, you know, we take the tasrifat, we take the... We take the tasrifat, we take the, the jumu'ah, if it's a... Yeah, mufrad and jama'ah. a noun. A noun. Yep. And then, this is our kitab al tabi This is what we use. I don't know if, if you had something that looked like this. But, uh, oh wait, what is it? So yeah, something like this, right? So we have the mufrad wal jama'ah. Al mufrad wal jama'ah. So this is exactly how I did, and then I took all the tasrifat also, like. Now, so the af'al, we have them here. 
And basically what, what I was trying to say is that me, how I did it, how I would go over is I would literally just memorize it like yeah. uh, <laughs> you know and you, re you remind me of me. <laughs> you see you see and, and, and I was gonna ask you like how do you do it? Because some of my students they don't they don't see this uh you know working as good uh for them as it did for me. So how do you do it? Uh, I did memorize. I memorized it because yes, I because there's no way any, learning any new language. You have to memorize the, the words. There is no way out of memorization because, no. or you got to use it on a day to day basis. But nobody speaks Fosha, and even in the Arab countries, I mm -hmm. always tell people, if you go, I remember I, I tried speaking Fosha to an Emirati, and he was like, sure. <laughs> he just he gave me this ugly look, and I was like, oh, oh I better stop. <laughs> what are you so, talking about? Yeah. <laughs> So he, so you have to memorize. And who, I speak to like I'm even here, right? Even though, alhamdulillah, I feel like the Muslims or the Arabs here in the Western countries, they're a lot more patient when you speak to them in Fosha. Mm -hmm. But in the Arab countries, uh, they're just like, "What do you want?" <laughs> like, yeah, you start, <laughs> yeah it's here, like, like they get rude almost. Yeah, like it, it looks sometimes like this. Is why I, I'm so not long ago I posted something on on YouTube. It wasn't a video, it was a, like a post. And I said how, how when I was in Egypt, I didn't benefit from being, like I was saying before, I didn't benefit from being in Egypt to, you know, in Egypt in general, in my Arabic. But because all my Arabic was practiced in the Merkaz with the Merkaz, students exactly. or the colleagues. or, But yeah. outside, it's, I, it almost messed up my, my Arabic, like to the point right now where, I remember I went to Saudi and I was talking to, I was in, in Mecca around the Haram and, and I, I entered a, a store and and the guy, I think he was Kurdish or something, he said, Anta Masri? I said, no, I'm not Masri, why do you say that? He said, La Ashen, uh, or, you know, like Ashen, this, this is Egyptian, but he messed up my, my yeah, your legend, yeah. you see, but a lot of people, they don't, not long ago, so I, I posted a, a, a video in Arabic. Uh, I think it was like rate my Arabic skill, Arabic speaking skills or something. Someone said uh, in the comments, some of what some of the words you said is not from the classical Arabic, it's from the uh, um, Egyptian yeah. uh, um, yeah. dialect. Which I, I, I don't, I haven't checked it, but but it's it, it probably ha happened. You see, it affects you without any doubt. Even here, when I speak to some of the. The, the halal stores here, and I, I try to hide any sort of Khaliji words, no. but it comes out because you, even my wife, she's Egyptian, right? Mm -hmm. I can say a lot of Egyptian words, but I'm trying to avoid it. But you, if you hear too much yeah. of that, you're going to use it in your vocabulary. Yeah, subhanAllah. Even me, when I, we have uh, students from, uh, so, for example, Sudanese sisters, and, and it just, when I talk to them, sometimes it, it's just natural. Like I might say Ashen or bus. Yeah, ah, oh, bus is very good. You see the thing like, and it's like, we have both stats, but you tell me not to say this, but you say, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, so it's, you know, what I was trying to say is that, that it's not always, I keep firm on this opinion of mine. It's not always the best. You're not going to benefit from being in an Arab country. Like if you want to learn Arabic, you can learn Arabic anywhere on the same level than anyone else. And subhanAllah, this is a brother. Um, his name, I think it's Rihan. He emailed me. I met him not long ago. I was touring with uh, Mufti Muhammad Munir in, in the UK. And I met this brother in, in the message. He came to me and started speaking in Arabic. And I was like, MashaAllah, I know the Rasul Arabiya. He said, I, I've learned here with a, with a teacher online. I said, MashaAllah. Exactly. And the words he was using, it was like, very nice. So I took his number and I say I wanted to interview him as well. Uh, but, you know, I just got busy. But inshallah soon I would just try and get in touch with him. But but yeah, it's not always the the best, the best, um, you know, the best option. However, inshallah, what I want to because, you know, there is always you got to oh, you always got to feed the the haters. As uh, as Mufti Muhammad Munir say, so I, I I can promise you, twenty years in the Middle East, you you go through some rough experiences. Don't get too excited. Subhanallah. <laughs> so what I would like to do right now is I would like to you know nuri nas wa nuri da alayhim ma huwa ladhi nasdiya min min al Arabiya hatta walo kana shayan you know mutawadiya 
لكن نعم اشرح لنا ما اعرف اي شيء بالنسبه لنصيحه صغيره في في دقيقه او دقيقتين لمن يريد ان يتعلم العربيه لكن باي سبب كان باي سبب كان لم يبدا الى الان فماذا تقول له وماذا تنصح به؟ اتكلم بالعربيه او بالانجليزيه؟ اي بالانجليزيه بالعربيه قليلا ان شاء الله ان شاء الله يعني نصيحتي يعني يعني اولا يعني اخلاص يعني هذا مهم جدا يعني نعم. لماذا انت تدرس العربيه؟ مم. واذا يعني مثلا يعني بعض الناس يعني انا عارف هم يبداون يعني دراستهم ولكن ربما بعد ثلاثه اشهر وهكذا في ها يعني في هذه الاوقات يعني يجب عليك ان تتذكر الايام لماذا بدات دراستك يعني هذا مهم صحيح. جدا صحيح يعني يعني نيتك يعني ان 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 تفهم القران بلا شك معظم الناس يعني يدرسون العربيه ليعني فهم القران ويعني ساشرح هذا بالانجليزي يعني مثلا you want to stand in salah صح so you want to understand what you're saying in salah Mm-hmm. So when you're demotivated, in this case, yeah. remember if you put through, if you go through these hard times, inshallah, yeah. you will see the fruits out of it. Yeah, and I'm glad and that you said this in English because I was going to say this is one of the problems that a lot of uh, my students have. And this why, going back to what I said in the introduction, we make sure that we fix this. So one of the things that are to develop discipline that I... Uh, that we do in our program is we ha- we do have something called SBA sheet, which is called, which is it stands for SBA as in see believe achieve. So, so you know I myself have my my one, and and my students have one as well. Those who take it serious actually, and it's basically it's basically, you know I don't want to show it because it's type type of kind of personal, but it kind of looks like like this. You see. Or, yeah, it kind of looks like this. Basically, is your your vision basically your vision your vision, and can you hear me? I think I lost you. I lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're back. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm back. Yeah. I can so, continue. so is you know everyone? I tell them to to create your vision, create your vision, who you want to be, who you was, who you was last year, who you trying to be this year, and write down your goals and. And write down your Wikipedia page, like how you would like to be remembered mm-hmm. after you you pass away or after you you die, basically. And you need to look at this every day. So what this does is exactly what you said. Like remember who you are because this happens a lot. Is you just forget sometimes you just so it's so much of a routine that you forget. Why are you learning Arabic? It just gets tiring. But when you look at your purpose, okay, yes, subhanAllah, this is what I always wanted. Okay, let's go, boom. It becomes your tasks towards achieving this goal becomes way easier, subhanAllah. Yeah. I mean, even till today, for me to go through my, my university, even though I think, I'm not sure if I want to, <laughs> after my graduation, I, I was thinking, my, tell, telling myself I might go to Egypt or some other place. For, this is study with the sheikh. <laughs> no. But even now, I tell myself, listen, I started this program to, to teach myself, even mm. though I didn't maybe get everything out of it. I still want to get whatever I can. Like no. if I have to pick up even the bits and pieces, whatever I could and hold tight to it, mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. Yeah. So... Yeah, it is important. It is important, man, because discipline, like I always say, you cannot rely on motivation, man. Motivation comes, goes, just like Iman, goes up, goes down. If you rely on motivation, you're just gonna stop, basically. So yeah, inshallah, what would you, what would you uh, recommend? A last, uh, you know, a few words to to anyone that wants to learn to learn Arabic. I mean, it is exactly the same thing I ask you in in Arabic, but you know, last few things that you would tell to someone that want to learn to learn arabic uh don't look at it as a short-term girl mm-hmm. uh because a lot of people who want who want to learn arabic they think it's a two-month thing look at it as a long-term goal and set goals for yourself like let's say for you to just like i said even simple books like you benefit so much from these like 
all you have to be is be patient. Mm-hmm. Think of it like as if you're going to a university. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it could take you four or five years to graduate. If you have that mindset and just be patient, you know, in yeah. the just Definitely. be patient with <laughs> so be patient with your instructor because sometimes you know like the the teacher the, the student also is like, Why am I taking so long and this and yeah. you gotta be patient. my my teacher, Alhamdulillah, and Allah reward him, he was very, very patient with because you know, learning online has a lot of difficulties also, like your connection. You know, in Egypt, they lose power and yeah. all those difficulties. Definitely. So, alhamdulillah, so be patient. It's not going to be an easy ride. And you have to put in your time. Like, there's no, because there are a few geniuses who've done it in maybe three months, four months. But the general rule is you got to, you got, it's a time. Mm-hmm. You got to put in your hours. And just like going to the gym, you don't become muscular in a day. You got to yeah. give in the time. Definitely. Same thing, just... Put in the time and inshallah you'll see fruits. You'll see it in your salah. <laughs> inshallah, definitely. Tayyib, inshallah, brother Arshad, it was, a, it was a pleasure having you. And I enjoyed uh, exactly. interviewing you. So, uh, so to hear to all the viewers and, uh, and watchers, if that's even a word, you can say watchers in English, right? Viewers is, uh, is what they usually use. No, viewers. viewers. So, so guys, uh, see you guys in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.